Welcome back guys. Today we're changing the brake and clutch fluid on Project MR2. Now, I've got myself a new little tool which promises to make this job effortless, quick, a one person operation and it only costs 22 quid delivered. What's not to like, eh? Wanna know a little bit more? Let's go and take a look. dry carpets what a treat now then first of all why are we changing brake and clutch fluid well mainly because as you may know if you've been watching the series the car has been outside for 12 long years and also the brake pedal it's a decent pedal and the clutch pedal ooh, bit stodgy and then you get a little bit of a bit of pedal there now also brake fluid is hygroscopic which means it absorbs water, which is why there are regular intervals that you should adhere to when you change your very often overlooked brake and clutch fluid. So let's have a little look at the tool that we've bought and I'll show you how it's gonna make that job so, so easy. The Sealy Pneumatic Vacuum Brake Bleeder. Now I've not gone for this because it's Sealy, I went for it because it was cheap. Now I have done a video on this before on a manual vacuum bleeder which I thought was the easiest thing in the world but trust me, this is gonna trump that. It's gonna make it even easier. We have a canister and we have a little tube at the end with a handy hook on it. And that hole there is gonna go over our nipple on our caliper or clutch slave cylinder. We simply attach air from the airline to the end of it and we press and that turns into a suction. Which when we put that on our caliper or our slave cylinder and open the nipple and press the trigger, it's gonna simply suck all the fluid through. Nice opaque tube there so we can see the color of the fluid and also the air in it. And also one quick thing, we talked earlier about hygroscopic, about the water content that is very much gonna be in that brake and clutch fluid. The water has a potential to boil when you brake, when it gets hot inside the calipers, it causes stodgy pedal, it causes brake fade, and it also causes the clutch to potentially not bite where it should do, and also causes a stodgy pedal. So without further ado, let's get connected up, and let's go for it. Right. We've removed the plastic trim in the... Is it a frunk, guys? Is it a frunk? I call it the front boot. We've removed the plastic trim in the front boot, and now we can get the lids off and have a little look inside. Um, doesn't look the worst in the world, I'm not gonna lie. The clutch is a little bit low, and the brake is also a little bit low. So what we're gonna do, also there's evidence of our lines being replaced, because I think it failed an MOT back in, I don't know, the 1930s on corroded front brake lines. So they've been replaced, which is nice. So we're gonna get ourselves a turkey baster slash large syringe, and we're gonna suck out all of the remaining old nasty fluid, and then we're gonna replace it up to the maximum level with good fluid, because we don't wanna suck that through the lines. So if we can start with some good stuff, we're starting in a good place. So that's that done. The next thing I'm gonna do is clean out with a bit of blue roll the clutch because it's not very nice. It's not a nice place to be. The brakes look pretty smart. They look all right. I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. However, the clutch, have a look inside. That is disgusting. So let's give that a good old clean out um, and replace it with new fresh fluid. Well, that escalated quickly. 19 mil nut, sealing washer, reservoir removed and cleaned and the little float removed as well but it's the only way to get rid of all of that nasty horrible crap it's time to put it back on the car and our fluid of choice is dot four the original car had dot three but that's now been replaced by dot four there you go 
That's those two topped up with fresh fluid and it is already looking a hell of a lot better. Lovely golden fluid in the clutch and the same in the brakes. Both on the maximum, so it is now time to slide underneath the car, get our special tool out, and first of all, we'll do the clutch. Now then, where is the clutch slave cylinder? Oh, just go past that. Oh, new exhaust. More in that next episode. Yeah, it's all coming on. Anyway, moving on. There she is, just up there. You've got the line that comes in and the bleed nipple just there. So we are gonna attach our tool onto there, crack that nipple off just there, and then suck all that fluid out. Now, flexi line there, hard line there that runs the length of the car to our master cylinder. So obviously we're gonna have to suck enough fluid down all the way through all the dirty fluid until it comes out clear. And then we should have a good clutch pedal. Yes! Result! If that would have gone wrong, I would have been really f Just slip a ratchet spanner over there in the do up position so that when we've got all that fluid through, we can just ratchet it closed. Moment of truth. Oh, what a dream! Look at that! Very mucky, very aerated, and I'm noticing that when I let go of the trigger, it pushes back up in. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to keep sucking it out as we're shutting the nipple. That is making my life a hell of a lot easier. Let's go and check the fluid level at the reservoir, top it up, and let's go again. Right, now that we're getting somewhere near it, that reservoir was nearly empty by the way, guys. We are now gonna crack the nipple open, suck a load of fluid out, and shut it as we are sucking. Let's go check the clutch pedal. Result, that's the clutch down. Right, that clutch feels amazing now, so I've finally got the feel back and it seems to be operating nicely, so I'm super happy. And this new tool is sorting me out, it's doing the business. So it's now time to do the brakes. I'm starting the furthest away from the master cylinder, right over in the back corner. So, same process applies. Crack open the nipple, suck some fluid through until it goes lovely and golden, and then whilst we're sucking the fluid through, Close the nipple back up, check the brake pedal for feel, check for leaks, move to the other side at the back, then the front passenger side, then we'll finish off at the front driver's side. Another job done. Close to that MOT as well. No, that was silly. Now, we are still waiting for a hub on this side, but it'll be here in a few days, so that's all under control. However, we don't have any brakes. So when we test our pedal and we're pushing our brake pedal, we don't wanna pop that piston all the way out. Not that I did a second ago and forgot that I had no hub on the car or anything, but to avoid that happening to you guys, pop a little bit of wood in there. Couple of pumps on the brake pedal and that piston will be pushing against the wood, and then you won't run the risk of popping the piston out and then having to wind it all the way back into the caliper. But if you do, if you're as stupid as I was, grab yourself this very cheap and effective little tool. It's a multi-tool with a 3.8 drive on the end, and it fits all of the calipers that I've ever worked on. So if you've got a wind back, like this one, you've got to wind the piston back into the caliper, Grab yourself one of these, pop it on the right one, stick it in, it'll go into the two little grooves in the piston on a ratchet and you can wind it back in. So 
sorted. Now, with the bit of wood in there, we've got a really good brake pedal. So there we go then guys. I think that went pretty well and that tool made it a very easy and pleasurable job. I'm now gonna go and do the front brakes, but at this stage of the game, I'm sure you understand how the tool works and where to go from here on your car. I hope you found this video helpful and informative, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more from the build, don't forget to subscribe. In our next episode, as you saw from that little sneak peek, the exhaust is on, despite the fact I had to get the welder out to weld some captive nuts onto the chassis. But never mind, we're gonna put some plugs in, distribute a cap rotor arm, and we're gonna get the car running in the next episode. Hopefully she'll be sounding pretty sweet. Oh, and uh, one other thing before I go. You know, we fixed that coolant leak the other day. Just found a little puddle of water underneath the car on the other side by the gearbox. So that means more work to do. More work. And I'm really running out of time on this one, guys. Project Austin Healy is looming. It really isn't long before it comes back. And when Healy comes back, she goes in this garage, which means MR2 needs to be roadworthy. Let's keep pushing. Let's get it done. Let's get an MOT. Let's see her back on the road. And then she can go on to her new owner to be improved and fettled and cleaned because she's very moldy because she's been outside for so long neglected, unloved, until eight weeks ago. And also guys, if you are struggling to find time for your project, there are no excuses. Get a couple of hours in on yours, you'll feel great about yourself, you'll step back and you'll go, I've done something tonight, I've achieved something, and then next time I'm gonna achieve even more. There are no excuses, get your project back on the road, give her the love she deserved. Stay tuned, see you soon, goodbye.